What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the next episode of Crossroads Rebuild. Thanks for joining me for this third episode here working on the new police interceptor. Today is engine day. I've got my buddy Doug here and we're going to work on starting to get this engine removed. So right before I started recording here, uh, Doug and I first got my old lift out of here. Um, that lift was super helpful for working on the Camry project, but it's just too small to work on things like this and even the Mercedes. Um, too many limitations for what I'm trying to do right now. So, I am probably going to go ahead and replace it with some quick jacks. So we pulled the lift out of here and we've got the interceptor all set up, ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and get started on figuring out what it's going to take uh, to get this motor out of here. So I'm probably going to go ahead and set you guys up on a time lapse and then when we find something interesting, I'll go ahead and show you what we've got going on. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, quick update. We, uh, we've tried to unhook basically everything that's up front. So we've got all the wiring uh, looms and all of that that were along the front, the cooling lines and such, all unhooked. Got the wiring loom bundled up over there as well as over there. This part's actually gonna come with the motor. I believe that part stays with the car. And then we've unhooked uh, the coolers. I remember I pointed out in the first video that the oil cooler on the front was uh, damaged. Our replacement motor actually has one of those, so we took that off to get that stuff out of the way. And um, now it's time to go ahead and crawl up underneath. Now, when they did the disassembly on this thing uh, originally, they did already go ahead and disconnect uh, from the downpipe here on the exhaust manifold in the front of the engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and crawl up underneath and see what there is to do underneath. It's an all-wheel drive vehicle, so I'm sure we're gonna have to disconnect uh, some sort of drive shaft or uh, transfer case or something. Um, there might be more of the exhaust down there. And then also need to kind of figure out how we're going to disconnect the drive shafts uh, going to the front wheels as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and crawl under there and uh, see what there is to do next. All right, I'm taking a look at what the best way to get these uh, drive axles out, uh, what the best way to do that is. And when we did the Camry, we just took off the uh, tie rods and moved it out of the way. I'm not sure that that's going to be the best way to go in this case. So I think uh, what we're going to need to do is remove this, um, I think it's a sway bar link or something like that. And it looks like someone's already loosened it up, although that nut's pretty tight. But anyway, take this off and then I think I'm going to go ahead and just drop the suspension down and let this whole thing sag. Obviously I have to take uh, this um, hub nut off here and then hopefully we'll be able to just pop the whole thing out that way. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and give a try and if it works on this side, we'll go ahead and do the other side and do it there and um, well, wish us luck.
All right, guys, hope you can hear me over the fan, but here is the passenger side, which is the side that took the brunt of the impact. We now have the drive shafts out of both sides. You can kind of maybe see back there where it came out of the transmission. And uh, so that's draining. Uh, anyway, we got both drive shafts out. That was one of the big things. And, um, but I want to show this to you while I'm over here because this is where the brunt of the damage is. So let's see here. Uh, up here, you can actually see, now this we looked at the other day uh, when I took the fender off. So you got a little bit of a fold right here. Uh, and then underneath, you can see that it's buckled here as well. Uh, down here, that's the uh, fender side of the, uh, of the frame rail here. So you can see that that buckle we can see from the engine compartment is pretty bad over here as well. So um, while my buddy is going to try to pull this, I have a pretty strong feeling that we're going to be going ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to go ahead and be replacing this. It's also interesting over here, let me see if I can sit this down, there we go, uh, that you can see uh, this is part of, it's kind of pinched in here, but part of that broken block that fell out, uh, the engine mount portion, um, so you can see that, and of course now it's just resting up on the subframe, and then you can see back here how the whole subframe got pushed back, and you kind of see that subframe mount there, uh, all of it got kind of pushed back. So, I have a replacement subframe, I've got a replacement frame and all of this stuff uh, that I should be picking up here in a couple of days. Uh, so, we should be uh, in good shape to get all of this repaired once we get this engine out. So the next thing I need to do is actually, unfortunately, climb up underneath there where it's <laughs> super nasty, that'll be fun, and actually see how to disconnect uh, the rear drive shaft from the transfer case. And then once that's done, uh, we're very close to actually pulling this motor up out of here. So, let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, guys, this is where we're gonna have to cut it off for today. I had hoped to actually get this motor up out of the interceptor today, but it didn't quite happen, and that is where we'll pick up next time. But what we did get done today was a whole lot of prep for it. We got uh, a lot of the electrical stuff uh, disconnected and out of the way, unhooked some old cooling stuff, took off some broken uh, pieces that were still attached to it, got the front axles out, got the rear drive shaft disconnected from uh, the transfer case and uh, got all of the mounts loose so in the next episode we are basically there need to go ahead and hook uh, my new engine hoist up to it and we're just about ready to go ahead and pull this thing out we just didn't have quite enough time today so before we end, since I've been teasing you with it for a couple of episodes now, let me go ahead and tell you about the deal I got on the replacement motor for our interceptor. And this is it. Now I don't want to unwrap it right now because I want to keep it protected until we're ready to throw it into the interceptor. But this is a 3.7 liter, same engine. This one is out of a 2018 police interceptor. And you're not going to believe this, but it has only 850 miles on it. 850, it's effectively brand new. Now Ford wants about 3,800 bucks for a brand new motor, and I was finding 50 to 70,000 mile engines for 12 to 1,500 dollars. But with freight shipping, I paid only 650 dollars for this motor. I cannot believe the deal I got on this thing, but I am so stoked. This motor is what allowed me to go ahead and make the decision to go ahead and rebuild this interceptor. So I hope you're as excited about this motor that I found as I am. I am so ready to get this old motor out, get everything prepped, and then get it over to the frame shop. So in the next episode, we'll get this motor up out of here. It's almost ready. And then we'll finish prepping the interceptor for framework. And then once it's done with the framework, then we get to the fun part. We start putting it back together and making it look like a whole vehicle again. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, why don't you go ahead and subscribe now. Click the bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I post periodic updates on the work that I'm doing on the Interceptor as well as my other projects. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. We'll see you in the next episode.